when it comes to complete fixed gears, there's a huge range of prices and some of them go upwards of $1,200. So why in the world would somebody buy a $1,200 fixed gear when they can get one for $400? Here are the differences between $400 fixed gears versus $1,200 ones. And this is what you get when you spend more. For lively riding fixed gears made out of top shelf, lightweight steel, check out our channel sponsor Lobby Cycles at the link at the top of the description. What's up, I'm Zach Alarda. Life is short, but don't make it shorter. So be sure to ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Firstly, on the entry level end, what kind of a fixed gear can you get for $400? What will be good and what will be bad? For the good, for $400, you're going to get a bike that will be plenty reliable for daily rides and for doing big rides. Assuming you keep up with regular maintenance, that is. The parts aren't going to be fancy, but they can definitely handle daily abuse. At this price, most fixed gears will either have a 4130 chromoly frame set or a 6061 aluminum frame set, making them considerably lighter than high tensile steel. The components will be functional. They won't be the stiffest, the lightest, or the most pleasant looking in the world, but they'll be able to handle whatever you throw at it. Most bikes at this price will have a pretty good ride quality. Some of them will be lively, or at the very least, they'll feel neutral to ride, which will be a considerable upgrade compared to something like a $200 face gear that can feel sluggish and tanky. For fixed gears, around $400 to $500-ish dollars is the sweet spot in terms of quality to price ratio. And because of that, they will be easier to sell in the event that you no longer want that bike. But these bikes, of course, aren't perfect. In order to keep the prices down, a lot of companies will skimp out on some components such as the saddle, the pedals, and the tires. And you might just want to upgrade these components outright. Along with that, you might develop a certain preference for parts and want to upgrade some components to better suit your riding style. Components like stiffer cranks, lighter, more durable wheels, and handlebar type. Now, I've ridden a lot of bikes that come in at around $400, and what I think most plagues bikes at this price is that a lot of them are pretty generic and are very similar to each other. Most of these bikes have the exact same components and even the exact same frame set. Because of that, they ride very similarly, they look very similar, and their reliability is very similar. Choice is just a bit more limited at the entry level. Another potential issue is that these lower priced bikes tend to have more variance in quality control, which can be costly in terms of time and money. The vast majority of bikes though that I've received and seen at this price have been pretty spot on in terms of quality control, but I have experienced imperfections in paint, receiving a dented frame set, receiving either incorrectly installed components or just flat out components that weren't on the spec sheet and failed components like this snapped crank arm bolt and variance in tire clearance, which is in my eyes, the most important feature of a frame set. Overall, $400 fixed gears are the best value for your money, but they do have some problems. What exactly are you getting when you spend three times as much for a $1,200 bike. For a $1,200 fix gear, you eliminate almost all of those cons that are associated with $400 fix gears. But of course, that comes at the price. With that said, a $1,200 fix gear might be more upfront, but it might actually be a better buy in the long run, especially if you intend on upgrading a complete entry-level bike. Complete bikes will almost always be the best bang for your buck. To build a bike comparable to even an $875 bike like the Wobby Classic, it would cost around $1,100. And I know, I did the math. And that's not even including tax, and shipping. Although it's a lot more upfront, you just get a bike that doesn't need to be upgraded. You also get a lot more options in terms of ride quality, customization, and features. You can choose whether you want an aggressive, stiff aluminum track bike or a lively, subtle, steel fixed gear with geometry between road and track. Or you can get anything in between those two. For $1,200, you can even build up your own bike, spec exactly the way you want it, instead of getting a complete. But even with a lot of complete bikes at this price, there is more customizability in terms of handlebar type, stem length and crank length to really dial in your fit, and tire options to get your ideal mix of speed, 
comfort, durability, and flat protection. And there's also more choice in terms of features like bottle bosses, tire clearance, fender mounts, and as trivial as it may sound, but it is important, looks. And of course, a $1,200 fixed gear will be plenty reliable and very enjoyable to ride. Most complete bikes at this price will have sealed bearing components on just about everything. That includes the hubs, the bottom bracket, and the headset, so they'll run smoothly without you ever having to maintain them. What you're also paying for at that price is better design. More thought is put into the tubing choices to balance weight, stiffness, aerodynamics, and durability to get the desired ride quality and performance. You can get bikes made out of different types of tubing like Reynolds 725 or Columbus Spirit with very specific buddings for that frame set. The geometries also tend to be better tailored for how the bike will be used. You can choose between track geometry, track-ish geometry, cyclocross geometry, or criterium geometry. For a $1,200 fix here, you're also getting pedigree, which is just a, a fancier name for fixie points. You can get a bike from a company that has a history of designing great bikes, something like a Chinelli, an All City, a Wabi, or a Dolan. These bikes also tend to have finer craftsmanship, like the one-of-a-kind dropouts on All Cities or those sweet lugs on the Wabi Special. A lot of what you're paying for also goes into the details of the bike. There's higher quality control, meaning that welds will be smoother and more consistent, tire clearances will be consistent, paint will be consistent, and components will be correctly installed. These bikes are also a manifestation of an idea, and I know that totally sounds just like philosophical babble, but I just really love bikes. Like, all cities are the intersection between practicality and performance and craftsmanship. Dolans are purebred, no-nonsense track machines. Wobbies have custom-built levels of ride quality wrapped up in a really simple package, all at a very reasonable price. And Chinellis are just straight-up overpriced hipster trash. But in all seriousness, Chinellis are a blend of Italian racing heritage with modern design. And it goes without saying that these bikes will have nicer ride qualities. And it's easier to get excited and to actually ride your bike when it just has a ride quality that you enjoy pedaling. These bikes will be lighter, they will tend to be more reliable, and they'll be more fun to ride. And at least for me, a $1,200 bike leaves very little to be desired. My Wabi Special here costs a total of around $1,200, and that's with upgrades. And for me, my dream bike has always been a lugged, high-quality steel bike, and now I have it. I haven't weighed it in its current state yet, but out of the box with all stock components, this complete steel Wobby Special weighs in at just 17.6 pounds. And even just out of the box has been the nicest riding bike that I've ever ridden. So is a $400 bike better or is a $1,200 bike better? Well, it depends who you are. You need to keep in mind that there's a law of diminishing returns. A $1,200 bike will cost three times as much, but the bike will only be about twice as good. So a $400 bike will be the best value per dollar. $400 bikes are great if you're trying out cycling for the first time and you don't know if you want to sink a lot of time and money into something that you might not stick with. It's a low enough risk to just try cycling out. You'll get a fix here that's a high enough quality to see if you actually want to spend more resources. And in the event that you don't want to get into fix gear cycling, you can pretty easily resell the bike for most of what you paid for. $400 bikes are also a really good choice if you just need a reliable secondary bike or beater. When I was in Taiwan for five months, I didn't have my own bike, so I just bought a pretty basic but reliable $400 loop Pista. And I rode that thing all over very rainy Taipei, and I even did a four-day, 230-mile tour down Taiwan on it, and during that trip, I had exactly zero mechanical issues. $1,200 bikes, on the other hand, are for more seasoned cyclists with developed tastes. You get a lot more choice and customizability to truly make the bike your own. Of course, there is the caveat that expensive is not always better. There's lots of overpriced trash out there. In some cases, you can spend less and get a better bike, so it's up to you to be diligent and do your research. But regardless, if you have or are looking to get a $400 bike or a $1,200 bike, what really matters is that you go out and ride. Before building up my previous bike, Ricky, I almost just flat out bought a Wabi Classic. On paper, the Wabi Classic gave me a lot more bike 
for less money. It had a lighter frame set with a better ride quality, had lighter components all around, and a legion of followers spanning from salty fixed gear riders to carbon roadies that all claim that it's been the nicest riding bike that they've ever ridden. I almost just flat out bought a Wobby Classic, but I ended up building Ricky because purple and sparkles. But now I've come full circle and now I'm riding an almost completely stock Wobby Special. And my trusty bike for the past three and a half years, Ricky, is now up for sale on eBay. And if you're interested in giving him a new home, you can check out that listing at the link in the description. The Wobby was just the right decision in the end and all of that hype that just sounded too good to be true ended up being true in my experience. It really is the nicest riding bike that I've had the pleasure to ride. So thanks to Wobby for sponsoring the channel and making these videos possible. And you can check them out at the link at the top of the description. Don't watch this upcoming video if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.